What do we pray for in the second petition? In the second petition, which is, Thy kingdom come, we pray that Satan's kingdom may be destroyed and that the kingdom of grace may be advanced, ourselves and others brought into it and kept in it, and that the kingdom of glory may be hastened. Question 102 in the Shorter Catechism. We are now engaged in that section on the Lord's Prayer. And we noted in the previous class that the first half of the Lord's Prayer is devoted to things that pertain to God himself, whereas the second half, uh, the second three petitions, are devoted to things that pertain to us and our, our needs. So in this question, uh, we come to the second uh, petition, right? the second petition of the Lord's Prayer, which is thy kingdom come. So, if we're thinking in terms of uh, what we've covered so far, the first petition addresses God's own glory, His name, and this second one uh, addresses God's own kingdom. So children will remember that a petition is a request. So the second petition is the second thing we're asking uh, from God. And what we're noting here is that in terms of the model God has given to us, that Christ has given to us for prayer, the emphasis up front is on asking, requesting, petitioning the Lord for things that pertain to Him, for things that are uh, pertaining to His own interests and um, his own glory. So here we're talking about uh, God's own kingdom. We could, uh, we could also think of it in terms of his work or his redemptive uh, work. And there are basically three things that the Catechism gives us by way of summary here. When we go to prayer and when we're asking the Lord to do things for his own kingdom, uh, among maybe a list of uh, a wider array of things, there are three primary things that we are asking for. And we'll look at each of those. So first of all, we are praying that uh, Satan's kingdom would be destroyed. So these two things are closely connected, the advance of Christ's kingdom and the uh, destruction of the devil's kingdom. And so we're praying explicitly that the kingdom of Satan would be destroyed. The way our catechism puts it is that, the king, that Satan's kingdom uh, may be destroyed. Now what does this uh, entail? What is Satan's kingdom? The Bible refers to him as the prince of the power of the air. Uh, it refers to uh, him as a liar and a murderer from the beginning. It refers to his uh, deceptive work over the uh, hearts and souls of, of unbelievers. And so we think in terms of those who are, are uh, outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that may mean um, as we look across the whole world, there are pockets of other religions. So we have uh, Islam and you know, many, many dozens of countries where Islam is a, a dominant influence. Or we think of Hinduism in various parts of Asia where the Hindu religion has uh, a foothold uh, among the population. Uh, it could be Romanism, Roman Catholicism, places like Central and South uh, America and, and some parts of, of Europe. Um, it also could be secular humanism, like we see in much of the West, in Europe and in the United States. Uh, all of these would be uh, expressions, if you will, of the kingdom of Satan. People are actually in bondage to sin and the devil. They're citizens of the kingdom of Satan. He rules over them, and they're given to idolatry and superstition and unbelief. 
And so we're, we're praying that the Lord would destroy these. So if you are accustomed to singing the Psalms, you'll find that God has put into uh, this divinely inspired manual of praise, uh, this, uh, this songbook that God has given for his church to sing, he's given a lot of war songs in, that, uh, in the Psalter. And uh, there, so there are, very, there are various portions of the Psalms that bring out this theme of the destruction of Satan's kingdom. And it's described in a lot of different ways. I mean, you're barely into the Psalms. Psalm 1 is contrasting the godly and the wicked man. You get to Psalm 2 and it's speaking about, you know, how there are nations that are raging. They're meditating upon vain, empty things and they're at war against the Lord. They're seeking to cast off his cords and so on. It's a picture of Satan's kingdom. And it's speaking about Christ reigning uh, as, as the king in heaven and how he'll, he'll hold them in derision and he will smash them with a rod of iron. It's, it's talking about the destruction of that satanic influence. And it's for that reason that kings are called upon in Psalm 2 to serve the Lord with fear and to rejoice with trembling, to kiss the sun lest they perish in the way, and so on. And so we're, we're praying that these uh, influences would recede, that we would see uh, the kingdom of Satan and these various forms of unbelief leveled to the ground, destroyed, uh, reduced to ashes, and the kingdom of Christ built, as it were, upon the ruins of these vestiges of, of, uh, of rebellion against the Lord. So we're praying that Satan's kingdom would be destroyed. We're also praying, <coughs> as I said, as a counter, <laughs> a counterbalance to this, that, uh, that Christ's kingdom would be advanced. So this is the polar opposite of the earlier one. Uh, we're seek seeking the advance of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you want some fuller material on what this entails, you can go to the larger catechism, as is often the case. And in larger catechism 191, it spells out uh, in greater detail some of what this, uh, this entails. But there are at least four things that I would um, bring to your attention that this, that this entails. Uh, the first is the propagation, propagation of the gospel. So we are thinking in terms of the redemptive work of Christ, the propagation of the gospel. And what we mean by this is the spread of the gospel throughout the whole world. So we're desiring that here where we are, locally, in our local circumstances, that the Lord would be pleased to convert sinners. Remember, uh, prayer is a means of grace, just as the word being preached is a means of grace. And so this is a means God uses to bring about his work. So we're praying that the Lord will convert sinners in our congregations, that the Lord will convert sinners in our uh, communities, that there would be a confirmation of the truth. But we also have a very strong interest in the gospel throughout the whole world. We, we desire that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And so we're praying for foreign missions. So all of those places where um, missionaries have been sent, we're asking for the Lord to bless their labors, to bring about the conversion of, of sinners and uh, the building up of, of his cause. And then there are places, of course, where missionaries have never been sent. And Jesus himself teaches us, pray that the Lord would raise up laborers to be sent into the harvest, which are white and ready to be reaped. And so this is part of what we're praying for in thy kingdom come, that the Lord would uh, provide such for the spread of the gospel through the whole uh, world. We're also praying for the uh, fulfillment of prophecy. Now this will, uh, this is misunderstood uh, by and large in our day. And uh, so there are people that have gone off into all sorts of crazy directions, dispensationalism and 
pre-mill, pre-trib, and all of that sort of stuff, and they preach on prophecy all the time. We're not talking about that sort of thing. But the Bible has laid out uh, for us uh, things that the Lord has promised he would yet do for his church. So you see that in the Old Testament being fulfilled in the Old Testament, being fulfilled in the New Testament. But there are still things that the Lord has promised to do. So one example that Larger Catechism 191 brings out is in Romans 11, where to be praying that the uh, Jews would be called. He said all Israel would be saved, that it would be like life from the dead, and with them uh, the fullness of the Gentiles brought in. So this would be just one example of the kind of thing that we are praying for. You can think of 2 Thessalonians 2, where uh, we also see there that the Lord says that the man of sin, the son of perdition, uh, that the Lord would smite him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him with the brightness of his coming. So we're to be praying for the gospel to bring about the destruction of the influences of uh, the Roman papacy and, and, uh, and such like. Uh, another thing that we're to be praying for is the purity of the church. So the purity of the church. And here we're thinking that uh, we're to be praying that the Lord would furnish his church with gospel ordinances, the ordinances of worship that he would provide for those, and gospel officers, so the church government. So we're praying that the Lord would uh, provide both purity of worship and purity in terms of church government for his kingdom throughout the whole world. So when you're praying for missions, you're, you're to be praying, Lord, provide that they would have all the ordinances and raise up elders and deacons and, and other native men who could serve in those uh, offices. It's part of the um, progress of the kingdom. So we want, it, we want the church on one side purged of the corruption in worship and government, and we want it uh, purified and propagated. Uh, the fourth thing that will seem somewhat strange perhaps to, um, to some uh, Americans anyway is that, the, uh, is that the kingdom would also be promoted by the magistrate, by the civil government. So this relates to what we call the establishment principle, and it's far bigger than we can get into in this catechism question, but uh, one of, part of classical Reformed Orthodoxy is this doctrine that we believe that the civil magistrate must protect and promote and uh, profess the true religion. And so we're seeking, uh, we're praying that the, the, the civil magistrates, our own and others, would countenance the true religion and would serve not in the capacity of the church, but within their own civil sphere, their limited civil sphere, that they would be nursing fathers and nursing mothers to the church, as Isaiah says, Isaiah 49. And so we're praying, Lord, cause the magistrate to profess the true religion and to protect and promote it within the civil sphere that the Lord has given to them. Uh, the third area, the third and last, is, uh, relates to something that still uh, is coming in the future, namely the, the kingdom of glory, that the kingdom of glory would be hastened. Okay, so Jesus says, I'm the end of the Bible, Jesus talks about how he's coming, and immediately there's a prayer. So Christ is promising, very end of Revelation 22, you know, I come, I come quickly, and we pray, yea, Lord, come quickly, right? So that's hasten the kingdom of glory, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is praying for what Christ has promised, the second coming, the bodily return of the Lord Jesus Christ, where he will bring the culmination of, uh, of all of his work of redemption uh, to pass, and there will be, of course, the judgment and the ushering in of the new heavens and a new earth and God's people reigning with Christ in glory. And so the Christian has a very strong interest in this kingdom of glory. So you think of this as Satan's kingdom. You could also think of this as the kingdom of grace, the second point. 
and here the kingdom of glory. It's an easy way when you go to prayer. Destroy the kingdom of, of Satan, uh, advance the kingdom of grace, and hasten the kingdom of glory. Very easy to kind of keep in your mind. So we're praying, yea, Lord, come quickly. We're saying, Lord, bring to pass all that must happen and hasten the day when Jesus will return and bring about the whole completion of his redemption. This is very much at the, 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 the heart throb of the Christian. Whatever God is doing now, the thing we look forward to most, prize most, desire most, is the end, the culmination, the consummation of, of all things. And there's nothing, nothing that happens beforehand that can be compared to the glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we love that, prize that, we pray for that, that, uh, that the Lord would bring this to pass speedily, according to his will, that he would hasten it. So question 102, what do we pray for in the second petition? In the second petition, which is thy kingdom come, we pray that Satan's kingdom may be destroyed and that the kingdom of grace may be advanced, ourselves and others brought into it and kept in it, and that the kingdom of glory may be hastened.